engineers send these test trucks. They soar over hills and dash across rough plowed fields. And all for what? To prove that they have the strength and stamina demanded by Dodge dependability. Bolted to the body floor are many 500 pound blocks of cast iron that more than double the maximum load. What power there is here, what ruggedness, what safety. For in spite of all this grueling punishment, the great Dodge 6 truck keeps right on rolling along. Well, that may be all right, but I wouldn't want my trucks driven that way. Why, of course not. But Mr. Jordan, these tests prove that the Dodge truck will stand more rough treatment than you'll ever give it. Well, I certainly hope so. Well, I'm sure of it. In the past week while this deal has been under discussion, I've been out on several demonstration runs with your men, as you know. I've seen how they operate. They're a mighty capable bunch of drivers. I'm glad you think so. Well, they are. Now, Mr. Jordan, after studying your requirements, I've come to the conclusion that this ton and a half Dodge truck is just suited to your requirements. What do you say? Suppose we sign the order right now. No, wait a minute. You haven't sold me a bill of goods yet. Mr. Jordan, if you'd study carefully the high price features in this low price truck, I'm sure you'd be as sold on it as I am. Just what features do you mean? No truck anywhere near the price of the Dodge compares with it in features that make it last longer and stand up better. The mechanical improvements, the cut down on wear and also save on repairs, on upkeep costs, and on gas, oil, and tires. Well, you've got to show me how your truck will do my work cheaper than the trucks I'm now using. I'll do better than that. I'll let you prove I'm right. Well, that seems fair enough to me. But how are you going to do it? With this new Dodge truck showdown plan. Well, let's begin with some of your features. That's just what I'm going to do. All we ask is that you compare the Dodge truck with any other in the lowest price field. Then, you be the judge. That's what I want to do. Let's have a showdown. Right. Suppose we begin at the beginning. That's never a bad idea. About a month ago, I visited the factory in Detroit. I wish you could have been with me. It was very interesting. In the first place, the Dodge truck plant is devoted exclusively to the manufacture of trucks. For nearly 20 years, experts in building strength, economy, performance, safety, and beauty into motor trucks have worked together that the Dodge Brothers truck shall be without equal among lowest priced trucks. You should have seen the activity. We started in the foundry. Great buckets swing along loaded with iron, lime, and coke that are fused in the furnaces at a temperature of 2,800 degrees. I know that, but then what happens? Out of the cupola runs the molten metal, white hot, into huge ladles by which it is possible to pour continuously. That makes the metal more uniform and of better quality. This unusual process is typical of the manufacturing advantages offered by the vast Dodge plant. Advantages that are reflected in the strength and economy of the big Dodge 6 truck. As the metal is drawn, samples are taken at frequent intervals and sent to the laboratory in the plant, where the metal is tested for uniform quality. Another check is made by an expert who looks at the mix through an optical pyrometer. If the molten metal falls below 2,675 degrees, it is rejected because then it would cool unevenly and cause cracks. Two, if the metal rises above 2,800 degrees, it cannot be used, for then the intense heat would burn the core and produce an imperfect casting. Here in the foundry, as elsewhere in the factory, there is constant inspection, insistent watchfulness, and never-ending effort that there shall be nothing but the finest of materials and the best of workmanship in these Dodge trucks. Within 15 minutes after the molten metal is poured, the casting is lifted from the mold, or flask as it is called in the foundry, and then begins a series of many intricate machining operations. For example, the ends of the cylinder blocks must be accurately milled to provide smooth surfaces to which are secured the timing chain case cover and the clutch bell housing. Those ends must be perfectly true to obtain unvarying alignment of the parts that are attached to them. After the ends are milled, the cylinder block is placed in a truly wonderful machine that mills the top, sides, and bottom of the block all in one operation. And this is mighty important, too, for to these surfaces are applied the gaskets that seal water in the water jackets, power in the cylinders, and oil in the crankcase. The sharp teeth of the milling cutters spin around and bite into the surface of the rough cast. 
leaving a plane that is test perfect and gauge true. After the sides, top and bottom have been accurately milled, the cylinder blocks move along on conveyors to a gang drill, another marvelous machine that in 30 seconds drills 33 holes in the block in a single operation. The block is set in place, a lever is thrown, and the drills go to work. Such efficient production saves you money, not only in the first cost, but also in the upkeep of this sturdy, trouble-free truck. Must be quite a machine at that. Now here's something I know will interest you. Did you ever see one of those? I tell you, it's worth its weight in gold and service saving costs. Is that so? What is it? That's a valve seat insert. Dodge was the first to use them on low price trucks. What are they for? They postpone valve grinding many extra thousands of miles. Save me money, eh? Yep. Good. How do they do it? Let me explain the whole operation to you, just as I saw it in the factory. Go ahead. Make me see it. First, the exhaust valve openings in the cylinder block are counterbore deep enough to hold one of these tough alloy rings. And incidentally, the workman responsible for the accuracy of these valve seats has been an employee of Dodge Brothers since 1918, only one of many tried and true workers in this industrial army that has labored for years upholding the enviable reputation of Dodge trucks for dependability. The next step is the installation of the valve seat inserts. The rings pop out of a slot in a refrigerator where they are kept at a temperature of not less than 90 degrees below zero. Wow, that's cold. What's the idea of freezing them? Well, as you know, cold contracts and subpolar weather maintained by dry ice in an insulated box shrinks the rings so they are readily driven into the valve seat. When they are warmed by the heat of the block, they expand and fit more tightly in the seat than would be possible by any mechanical means. They're in to stay. Now, when the worker tries to set a ring that is at room temperature, it simply can't be done. With this valuable feature, perfect compression is obtained, and you get more power for less gas. Boy, I'm for that. The trucks we've got now certainly use plenty of gas. Now the inserts are ground, and they're so hard that a grinder is required to revolve at the amazing speed of 13,800 times a minute to give the insert the necessary polish. Think of it. That stone spins around the rate of 230 times every second. These super hard inserts won't pit and they won't burn. Then there is a final inspection by long trained mechanics to ensure perfect concentricity of the valve seat. In itself, this inspection is typical of what goes on throughout the Dodge plant, for these parts are held to one half of one one thousandth of an inch. The valves are installed and then are submitted to the final grinding. Intake and exhaust, all 12 of them at once in a single operation. The combination of these super hard alloy inserts and the excellence of production and inspection methods means to every Dodge truck owner many extra thousands of miles without valve grinding. And that's no small item of expense either. And Mr. Jordan, that's only one of many high price features in this low price Dodge truck. Well, they can't all be that good. Why, I've only just begun to tell you about them. Here's another. That's the old-fashioned cast iron type of piston and connecting rod. Now, lift this. That's the Dodge piston of aluminum alloy. Imagine the saving with the Dodge truck that has six and one-third pounds less weight to push and pull with every revolution. Six pounds less. Hmm. 